Tunji Ladner and I represent Wangunet. Wangunet stands for the West African NGO Network. Well, I started Wangunet, um, I think, uh, 2000. So to, in a sense, I'm the founder. But found sounds so grandiose because it means you're starting something really big. But it was an idea that was started in 2000 and it was my idea. So my present role now is just to manage it as the executive uh, director. My name is Okude De Famous and I serve presently as the MD and CEO of Giant Stradity Solutions. Um, Giant Stradity Solutions is um, a complete IT solutions provider. And, um, our main focus is on software, hardware, database management, mobile apps development, and um, we do supplies as well. So we're basically into everything IT. My name is Dola Oluwa Awujodu. Um, name of my business is Electronic Settlement Limited. I'm the managing director, CEO. Um, we are into e-commerce, basically electronic my payments. My name is uh, Ronke Taiwo. I'm the head of administration and management in INITS Limited. Um, INITS Limited is it's a solution provider. We're an IT company set up to provide solutions to our clients from all spheres. My name is Tayo Ryosu and I'm the founder and CEO of Paga. And uh, Paga is a mobile payments uh, company here in Nigeria, one of the licensed operators. Um, we've been around now for since April 2009. Um, so one of the products, uh, it's uh, the NigeriaElections.org uh, portal and it was uh, a virtual um, online um, coalition. Uh, so if you go to nigeriaelections.org, you will find some of the work we've done. And it was a crucial contribution to the democratic process during the last elections because it was a one-stop shop for all the intellectual research and issues that had to do with uh, elections before, during and after. Um, also, we managed to create some very useful applications which uh, uh, helped uh, voters with their electoral processes. Um, some of it is the mapping. If you go there, you see a map where the first people to actually map the results. So you have uh, a data visualized mapping of Nigeria and all the um, uh, results of elections. As a matter of fact, that iconic uh, map that came after the presidential election that clearly showed the divide between North and South in terms of voting patterns was some of the work that Wango did. Our first key product in the market right now is Nigeria's first ever all-in-one social network, boogieboss.com. The name of our product is Cash Envoy. It's an online portal. You can see it on www.cashenvoy.com. It allows you to receive, if, if it allows you to receive payments on the internet. So basically that's what it does. We currently have over 500 websites using our service. We are approved by the Central Bank of Nigeria to process online payments. And what we do is develop customized applications for clients. And some of our clients are in different verticals. We have clients in the e-commerce vertical, like simplyinfants.com. We have clients in the travel vertical, like travelonera.com. We also have clients like Clients that work for the government. We also work for INEC, that's Independent National Electoral Commission. We manage um, some of their databases. We also have clients in the corporate environment. We're talking about um, outsourcing companies like resource intermediaries. Paga allows anyone in Nigeria to send money from a mobile phone to another mobile phone or from online to anyone who has a mobile phone number. Um, you can also walk into any one of our agents. Our agents are pharmacies, grocery stores, we like to say Mama Rasaki down the street who you know, has three walls and uh, selling provisions. Um, but our agents are places in your local community where you can actually go and, um, and perform transactions such as deposit money into your PAGA account, withdraw money that was sent to you, or actually go there and pay bills, send money to somebody else, or buy airtime uh, for, for yourself. So in summary, I would say Paga is a consumer finance business. 
um, that is leveraging on mobile technology, mobility being the important part of that. Um, I think it was in April of 2000. But it's gone through many iterations. There's a time in which, you know, more or less I abandoned it because it wasn't it, the, the idea then of, you know, the way I describe it, uh, high tech in a low tech environment. There were just so many challenges, right? Uh, which bandwidth was just for one. Uh, so after a while, by 2006, I think it was just uh, really, for all intents and purposes, moribund. It wasn't really as active as it once was. It was a much bigger organization. Like, um, Wangore 1.0 was a much bigger place. Um, you know, our initial space was some building, I think Icon House it was in Victoria Island, and it had a staff of maybe about 50 people. So this is a much smaller, much leaner, much tighter team as uh, Wangore 2.0. So it's been around for that long, going waxing and waning, and mercifully it's now waxing. James Fred IT Solutions was founded January 2011, but um, we came fully into the market. We were not operational for the first few months, but from April 2011, we were on the ground working uh, up to this point. We have been trying our best to. Um, the solution, we started the solution in 2009, November 2009. We became a limited liability company in 2010 and uh, we became approved by the Central Bank of Nigeria in 2011 and we've been growing since then. INITS was founded in 2008, in January of 2008, so that will make us about four years old. Five, my bad, five years old. So our company was founded in April 2009 um, and I, I bootstrapped the company for six months. And um, today there are 120 of us in the company and we're in 11 different cities in Nigeria. Um, we have regional offices here in Lagos, in Abuja and in Onisha. And we also have our development team based out of Ethiopia in Addis Ababa. So, um, you know, the, the plan is to grow the team currently from 120. Most of the team is actually out of Lagos and in, in, in um, you know, headquarters here out of Yaba. Directly, we have about, uh, I think, 10, 11 people on payroll directly, but we also have associates that we bring in for work. So basically, on every month, we pay out to about anywhere between the 11, 10 or 11 people we have, the 11 people we have actually, and maybe another 7 to 10 uh, contractors that work for us. At the moment, um, we, we have five employees on ground. Um, we are currently seven in total. Currently, at INITS, our staff strength is 11. Um, today, there are 120 of us in the company, and we're in 11 different cities in Nigeria. I'm very aware that there is a cluster around the Yaba hub. Well, the thing about clusters is almost by definition uh, a self-reference, self-aggregating uh, unit. People just organically converge around a space and then they, they, they evolve. Those are the best type of clusters, the ones that grow organically. And I think the Yaba cluster is also one that has a promise of growing organically. It's always very difficult when you try to uh, create a cluster by fixing in a ge geographic location. There are all kinds of factors that contribute to people making decisions as to where and why they aggregate around one particular geographic area. Um, I think personally that uh, moving from the island where we were uh, not too long ago to the mainland has been a great idea because it brings us closer to our demographics, younger people. It brings us closer to uh, the learning institutions here. Uh, we're surrounded by about three or four tertiary institutions. There's the University of Lagos, there's Yaba College of Tech, I think it's another uh, teacher training college. So there's really, um, um, should I say, uh, the possibility of abstraction from young people who are tech savvy. I'm aware Yaba is becoming a fast growing cluster of IT businesses. I, I think there are, there are obvious reasons why Yaba is becoming a fast growing cluster of IT businesses. Um, if you take a good look at the environment itself, I think it speaks for itself. Um, the environment is accessible from any part of the mainland or the island. 
and um, security is one big deal here. You could feel safe like your home. I'm aware that there are some tech startups in Yaba. I became aware some months back. I realized that there were a few IT companies in Yaba. Why they are in Yaba, I do not know. But personally, from my own experience, I like Yaba. I like the mainland. Um, I feel that the island is getting too crowded and Yaba is like a bread from the island. It's also, in my own opinion, the center of Lagos because we have Todd Milan Bridge, we have Ikrodu Road. So I think you can basically reach anywhere if you're in Yaba. It's interesting to see that there, there's like an aggregation of tech companies around here in Yaba. Um, for us in INITS, it's, um, it came out of two different things. First is we already had a property in the area. So what we did was to simply build, construct our office um, there. And the second thing was we wanted a place where we could easily reach other parts of Lagos, where most of our clients are. Yeah, I think Yaba is definitely has become a, a, an IT cluster. Um, and I think for us, when we were looking to move, our offices were initially in Ikoyi. And when we were looking to move, it was a combination of trying to find a place where we could grow into, um, where there was sufficient space for the right price. Um, as a startup, you know, you have to be thinking about sort of how much are you paying for real estate, etc. Um, and Yaba was very attractive to us for a few reasons. Um, one of those reasons was the fact that there were already some IT companies on Herbert Macaulay. Uh, the other thing that made it really attractive is the location. It is right between the island um, and also going to the rest of the mainland. Uh, but in general terms, I can see that uh, the adoption and adaptation rates are going to go high. People are going to adopt and adapt these technologies to suit their, uh, their purposes. I mean, clearly there's going to be, with increased broad broadband uh, penetration and last mile solutions, it will be possible to now be able to fully deploy some of the services and ideas we see elsewhere. So if broadband becomes near ubiquitous, right, it means that uh, you can now begin to layer on value-added services because the internet access is good and, uh, and people can subscribe to it. So I see a growth in more online uh, uh, um, uh, applications, online markets, payment fulfillment systems at the back end of those, and basically creating economic commercial linkages. Um, but all of this also has a bearing to do with, uh, has a bearing on how government policy supports the growth of this type of cluster. The industry in two to five years, I think it will be massive. I think um, because there are a lot of tech startups coming up, there are a lot of e-commerce um, sites coming up, and you have, we have a lot of young Nigerians. In fact, we have a lot of young Nigerians that are having new ideas, new solutions every day. So I think that in the next two to five years, I think it's going to be massive. I think it's going to be exclusive. I think um, something great is actually going to come out from Nigeria. In five years from now, I see mobile application playing a major role in the industry five years from now. I see um, the standalone applications will always, always be very useful in the industry. So um, I believe where we are, which is in standalone software applications and so on and so forth, where we're in the right place, the industry is going to be in a situation whereby more and more Nigerian companies, both uh, international companies that are based in Nigeria, would then turn to look at the indigenous companies to provide solutions. Because in another two to five years, they would have more confidence in the IT companies in Nigeria and their abilities to deliver on software and other solutions in IT. Technology, IT technology, whichever is so defined, is an ideas business. You have to have an idea. It has to be innovative. It has to be competitive. And the nature of this particular business is that you're not competing with yourself necessarily. You're competing with the rest of the world. Because one of, one of the things that this technology enables us to do is to really have, in a, almost in a literal sense, a global marketplace. So the question you have to ask yourself uh, are, are multiple. Are your ideas globally competitive? Are your ideas globally viable? So one of the biggest challenges is having the intellectual capital to be able to have ideas 
that are global in scope. They might be local in application, but definitely they have to be global in terms of the quality of those ideas. The other idea is to be able to now think about taking an idea and making it economically viable. Another challenge is, the, is just the low adoption rate uh, of technology here. Because it is necessarily a competitively global market space, it means that uh, any product that is well developed outside will very readily find purchase here. So there's really no protection for innovation locally because you're competing not just with yourself, you're competing with other people who have other resources far more than you have locally to produce more or less the same type of good. Data, the cost of data. Um, you cannot run an IT business and not have nothing to do with the internet. They go together. Um, the cost of keeping, here we, we, we run a 24-7 plan here, and the cost of keeping that alive could be so alarming if, if I disclose the figures. Then also, um, another challenge primarily in, in this environment that I have seen, that we have encountered, um, is um, government, government um, policies per se, uh, and um, uh, maybe I should just break it down a little. Um, from time to time, we, we, we get hijacked by guys from the local government asking for levies and fees that are just inexplicable. Um, apart from electricity, which everybody knows, I think um, something else can be done about data. I think um, data on your mobile, data on your PC. I think data cost in Nigeria is expensive. I think if something can be done about that, um, the cost and of course the connectivity itself, I think if something can be done about that, it will really help innovation. I think our biggest challenge is internet. Um, a lot of our clients have solutions that we build for them and host online. Um, constantly we have to make changes to them, we have to get updates, push updates and this can be a challenge sometimes. Uh, we've Over the last one year we've had, we've changed to five different ISPs. Um, each member of our team has an alternate source of internet. And then the biggest challenge we actually face here is electricity and power. Right? Um, I think we have really good water. Um, electricity wise, we, you know, we're on gen most of the time. The second biggest problem we face is actually the traffic stop, um, just two stops down from here before you get to CC Hub. Um, in fact, if you're at the CC Hub, you can look out and you see the problem. Right? There's, a, there's a light that is just everybody's merging into, into a couple lanes and it causes significant traffic all the way to the third mainland bridge. Well, in terms of support, a lot of it has been self-help. I mean, people have aggregated, they have, you know, begin to cluster their small businesses. Um, CC Hub is a good example. It's like a pre-incubator uh, hub that helps young people um, evolve their ideas to the point where they can possibly attract funding for it, from, mostly from the private sector. But there's a lot the government can do, both at the federal and the state um, level. I understand that the Lagos State Government itself is particularly interested in cre creating this innovation space, right? And so that is by way of direct support. But we have to go two or three decks in so that they have uh, a regulatory framework that actually helps to nurture. It might mean all kinds of interesting uh, inducements and incentives, tax breaks, but the state itself has to protect the space itself. Apart from the government, um, in the last few years we have seen private sector participation working so much, even for government. In terms of support, I think um, we can get a lot of support apart from the government. You can get from the government. Apart from the government, you can also get from um, corporations, institutions, and big organizations, I think you can get support in terms of funding. I think funding is key because I know there are a lot of innovative ideas that are coming up and um, every time they are looking for seed funds, I think um, if something can be done, I know something is being done, but more can always be done in terms of funding. I, I really believe the only level of support I can think of sitting here would be for the government to invest in our youth in terms of IT. So maybe we can even start from what is being taught in the higher educations and you know the, the secondary schools where you have one computer in a lab and you know they don't even know how to use the computer, it's just there. 
So maybe we need to start from the basics anyway. You know, I can't devise a whole strategy sitting here on how it can work. We, you know, our, our story is, uh, we've been very fortunate, right? Um, our story, I always say, is not the norm. Um, from the very beginning, we've been fortunate to have angel investors who have supported us and given us the capital that we need uh, multiple times over to continue pushing forward and continue building, building a business. So I think there's a lot of work we have to do with the government to encourage and provide the enabling environment to allow for um, high net worth individuals to put their money in Nigeria, to put their money in startups. Um, and the things the government can do about that, right? Whether it's providing tax, tax breaks for people who do those kinds of things, um, or whether it's just sort of encouraging foreign capital and foreign investors to come and provide the platform. There's also a variety of grant type support that exists, but as we've seen in other parts of the world, it's not grants that build businesses. Um, it's going to take real you know, um, investors who are going to put their money at risk and entrepreneurs who are going to put themselves at risk um, that will build a business.